So it's that time of year again when some of us make resolutions for the coming year. Over the next several weeks, the gyms and fitness centers will be jam-packed with those who have contracted what I like to call New Year's resolution fever. And it's my hope that those who make resolutions for the coming year will be able to keep them and that the resolutions will help them to achieve their desired outcomes. Now, those who make New Year's resolutions often make them in the areas of health, fitness, finance, career, academics, education. But when making New Year's resolutions, an area that can sometimes be overlooked is that of the spiritual life. And so a question for us to think about as we begin the new year, and if we are in the process of making resolutions, are we going to make a resolution to help us grow in the spiritual life? In our gospel today, we are presented with the familiar story of the wise men that followed the star leading to the Christ child. They offered him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so let's look at each of these just briefly. Now, gold is a symbol of royalty. Uh, the wise men knew that there was something regal about this child in spite of him being born in such poor conditions. In our own lives, we have the opportunity, opportunity to offer the Christ child gold when we are spiritually detached from those material possessions that we have. Frankincense is the sweet-smelling material which was burned by the Jewish people on the altars, symbolizing the hope that they were placing in the Messiah that was to come. And then myrrh, symbolizing the sacrifice that Jesus would make by taking on our human weakness and nailing it to a cross. Uh, myrrh is a reminder to us that the Christian life is not without some sacrifice, some self-denial. Uh, sometimes these can be big sacrifices, and sometimes they can be small ones, like smiling at someone who annoys us or lending a listening ear to someone when we have other things on our mind. Now, getting back to our wise men, their faith gave them a unique privilege. They were the first among men and women to adore Jesus when the rest of the world did not know him. The gospel indicates that they were overjoyed upon seeing the star and entering the house. And if we think about it, this makes perfect sense. They must have been happy beyond words to have found the child after traveling so far. Because you have to keep in mind that a journey from Jerusalem to Bethlehem would have meant a great deal of effort on their part. It would not have been an easy trip. So it's a good reminder for us, I think, that a real, authentic Christian spiritual journey involves effort on our part, but that any path that leads us closer to Jesus ultimately ends in joy. Now, Matthew tells us upon entering the house, the wise men saw Jesus and did him homage. They adored him. But adoring him was not just for was not, was not just a privilege for these wise men 2,000 years ago. It isn't something that is reserved for only a select few. You and I are able to adore the same Jesus that the wise men adored 2,000 years ago any time we spend time with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, in Eucharistic adoration. You see, while the celebration of Mass is certainly the high point of the spiritual life, it's not the only thing. And St. John Paul II wrote about this. He wrote that, Worship of the Most Holy Eucharist outside of Mass is an important practice that can become an infinite source of holiness and a practice of immeasurable value for the lives of Christians. He goes on to write that adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in a certain sense extends the reception of Holy Communion in a lasting way and can prepare us to participate more fully when we take part in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. The practice of Eucharistic adoration has been supported by the example of many lives of the saints, including St. John Paul II, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Therese of Lisieux, and St. Teresa of Calcutta, just to name a few. St. Alphonsus Liguori wrote, of all devotions, that of adoring Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament is the greatest 
other than receiving the sacraments themselves, the one dearest to God and the one most helpful to us. So in other words, the best thing that we can do spiritually outside of receiving the sacraments themselves is by spending time with our Lord in Eucharistic adoration. That's what St. Alphonsus is saying to us. When we spend time with Jesus, truly present in the Blessed Sacrament, we have the opportunity to thank Him for His passion, death, and resurrection, and for giving us a share in His divine life. We have an opportunity to sit with God one-on-one -on -one and share with Him our thoughts, feelings, desires, hopes, fears, joys, struggles, dreams. We have an opportunity to share with Him anything that's on our minds and in our hearts. Spending time with Jesus in the Eucharist can help us to deepen our relationship with Him and give Him an opportunity to draw us closer to His Sacred Heart. And so wherever we might be in the process of deciding on our New Year's resolutions, I hope that every one of us here will make at least one resolution as it pertains to the spiritual life. And I encourage you to make Eucharistic adoration a part of it. Because spending time with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament will change your life for the better. I promise.